Good evening, Victor. Today is January 8th and Friday. We got some disappointing job reports news this morning. Uh, jobs were lost first time in the last eight months. The numbers were down 140,000 against the consensus of 50,000. And most of it was not unexpectedly in the leisure and hospitality industries where all, almost half a million jobs were lost. No surprise there with all the restaurants closed. Uh, but of course, market has liked it because bad news is good news as more bad news, more stimulus coming. And this afternoon, the market has sold off a little bit after being at the highs before, after one of the Democrat senators said that he is not going to vote for 2000 stimulus check. But of course, after a phone call from the party, I'm sure he has changed his mind. And now then he said that he is going to vote for it or maybe vote for it. And the market rallied back up and closed at the high. It was a 50 point rally from the low of the day. Um, also, because uh, Biden promised to raise minimum wage to $15, as well as he promised to give more money for black and brown businesses, whatever that means. Uh, NASDAQ, of course, broke through as well, the 13,000 number, as we discussed yesterday, and closed at the high over 13,100. Uh, the only market that was down today was Russell, that closed down a few points. But that was to be expected after 10,000, I mean, 10% run up from the lows. Uh, Bitcoin made it to 42,000 today and then sold off under 40. And silver and gold were hit with silver down 7% and gold over three and a half. Of course, uh, I was surprised by this given that the whole political theater that's going on and we have an unhinged president with his finger on the trigger, allegedly. But I think Nancy Pelosi is the one who got unhinged today and issued a statement titled preventing an unhinged president from using the nuclear codes. She had a discussion, discuss available precautions for preventing an unstable president from initiating military hostilities or accessing the lunch codes and ordering a nuclear strike. She said that steps are in place to prevent Trump nuclear launch. And they're trying to do another impeachment soon. God knows why with Trump less than two weeks left and block him from ever running again. Um, because he has engaged allegedly in high crimes and misdemeanors by inciting insurrection. Uh, I mean, I, regardless, regardless of what you think of Trump, I think what Nancy said and the Democrats are doing is really damaging for America. It's, uh, it's a terrible day for the USA and how it looks in, in, in for the rest of the world. I'm sure Putin is crying with laughter looking at all of this theater and Democrats talk about reconciliation by do the opposite. It's a shame. Uh, anyway, back to the markets. Victor, what do you think of today? Well, you, you <clears throat> highlighted a lot of bad news. Yep. And lots of good news too. I had a I had a dream last night and I recalled a 1900 book on speculation that I had read. In that book, the trader said that he learned that the time to get in the market was when there was very bad news. Uh, he didn't. He didn't say never to short, but <laughs> I've added that to the firmament. But if you think back, whenever there's been bad news about the market, uh, whatever whatever it was at the time, going back um, 50 years, 100 years. In one of my books, um, they said that the market had its biggest rally ever during the most devastating war ever, the first, first world war. 
But there's another thing that, uh, that I've been highlighting. And whenever I have a bad dream, I, I think of Jesse Livermore and how he committed suicide and how he went bankrupt five times. Uh, and he was operating in an area where there was 6% commissions on a $40 stock he paid. He paid a a dollar and a half each way. And then there was a bid ask. So of course he went bankrupt because he'd start out down about nine or 10% by the time he made his first trade. And it was amazing that it, I guess the, the average duration before he went into bankruptcy was probably a year. But there is something very good in that book. It's the only good thing because he has about 50 rules for trading in reminiscence of the stock operator. And all of them are untested. And all of them would lead you to ruination. That's why so many people follow it and say it's their favorite book. But there was one good thing he had in that book. There was an old man who gave him some advice. Now, I've, I've known a lot of old men who have given me advice. Irving Riddell um, was very, very helpful to me. One of his rules was never meet a margin call. Uh, another thing was you'd say the market will always be there. However, this advice that is in reminiscence of a stock market, fortunately it wasn't one of Jesse's things, but it, There was an old man that they called the turkey. And he would he was from Fullerton. Is that then in Illinois? Fullerton? Fullerton? Yeah. Is it or, a street? Was it, no, was it in California or Illinois at that time? Uh, Fullerton. Uh, Google Fullerton, it's a city in California. California. Yeah. You know that Jesse traded from California. Anyway, he said Jesse was was thinking why he, he thinks he's so accurate and he caught the 1907 bear market and all the brokers had to beg him to take his short stack, which he did, did at the bottom. But he hadn't gone bankrupt five times at that time. But he was saying, he was saying, why, why am I not making more profits? A lot, of, a lot of, a lot of foolish people ask that question. Once a, once a trader made two hundred percent in a year, and he was angry because he should have made more. But here's the rub. His real name was Partridge. And, and Jesse would say, well, you know, I have to sell this stock because it's much overpriced. And Partridge would say, well, it's a bull market. It's a bull market. Yeah. And at that Livermore, Uh, he didn't believe it, but then he heard a, a conversation between Turkey and a young trader, Omar Harwood. 
And Elmer said, I've just sold my Climax Motors. My people say the market is entitled to a reaction and I'll be able to buy it back cheaper. So you better do otherwise. I mean, if you still got it. Well, yes, Mr. Howard, I still have it, of course. Well, now the time is to take your profit um, and wait for it to dip. And Turkey said, oh, no, I can't do that. Didn't I give you the tip to buy it? You did, Mr. Hardwood, and I'm very grateful to you. And didn't that stock go up seven points in 10 days, didn't it? It did, and I am much obliged to you. But I couldn't think of selling us. Why not? Why, this is a bull market. The old fellow said it was, though he had been given a detailed explanation. Well, I know this is a bull market as well as you do, but you better slip them that stock of yours and buy it back. My dear boy, I sold that stock now. If I did, I'd lose my position. And then where would I be? And when you're as old as I am, and you've been through as many booms and panics as I have, you know that to lose your position is something nobody can afford, not even John Rockefeller. By the way, Jim Murray would always say that. People would ask, say the same thing about it. It's the time to sell. He said, yeah, well, that may be true, but by the time you buy it back, you'll probably end up paying 10% more. He says, I, I hope the stock reacts and buy for sale and that you will be able to repurchase your line at a substantial concession. But I can only trade in accordance with my experience. Uh, but I'm much obliged to you. But it's a bull market, you know. Well, in the last year, the market has closed at a 20 day high on 80 occasions out of 250 trading days. So about one third of all the days, the market is closed at a 20 day high. However, there's something else going on. The market has closed at a 20 day high three days in a row. However, bonds have closed at a 20 day low. In fact, the stocks have closed at a all-time high three days in a row and bonds have closed at a six month low three days in a row today. They closed there on um, 168.50 they put on. It's gone down four or five percent this year while stocks have gone up three percent. Now how many times well, you might think that with bonds at a 20 day low, three days in a row, and stocks at let's just say call it a 20 day high, it hasn't happened in the last 10 years. But in the last 22 years, it's happened 11 times. But Stocks have set the high and bonds set a low. And guess what? In every case, the stock market three weeks later is higher, an average of 2%. So, as Mr. Partridge said, it's a bull market. So, Two percent is not that much for a three-week move. We move that in one day these days. Well, yeah, the market will, the market fluctuates during that uh, three-week period. This was in, this goes back to the nineteen nineties, uh, but it's a bull market. You know, if, let's follow Partridge's advice. There was a, there was a drop from 
3710 to 37 to 3670 today. There's a lot of bad news, as you say, one, one senator said he wouldn't vote for it. The market was, there was so much bad news. I mean, they're going to impeach the president. As you say, we look like, we look very foolish. Like a banana republic at this point. Third world country, not a first. All right, there's bad news. That's one you should buy. Yeah. <laughs> and that's one you should have bought in 2020 when the economy looked terrible. And as mentioned, Every year there's been bad news almost as bad as this. And yet the market goes up 10%, 12% a year. In the last 10 years, it's gone up 14% a year. So that's, that's the story, I think. We could talk about how the president has ruined the Republican Party and how they're in disarray and what it will seem like to, um, to the Europeans and Asians if they impeach the president again and all the havoc that it would cause and the fight between Pence and the president, but it won't override the one thing that is a bull market. And especially if you remember, the market started this week by going down. Monday. It was down about 5% at one time, it was down more than a thousand points. That's that was merely the duplicity and the camouflage that, that was set up for the market to set up go to three, three new all-time highs and, Every market go up. I, I mean, well, let's not forget that gold went down five percent this week. Yes, it started at 1950 and it ended at 1850. What a nice drop of three percent today. Mm -hmm. What do you make of that? With Bitcoin having doubled since we first interviewed Andy Aiken. Bitcoin has doubled from 20,000 to 40,000. Gold, gold from close to 2,000 now to 1850. Do you think that it indicate? I mean, there's, there's a saying that, you know, when, when gold, Gold goes down, and you know the stock market goes up, and vice versa. But what's your take on that? I think it's. I mean, I'm not an expert on metals at all, but I think it has to do with the dollar reversal. The dollar index was up this week, so that's affected. The dollar, the dollar was basically unchanged this week. It's still, it's still at 120, 122. Euro is 122. Well, the last two days, it was kind of trying to go up a little bit. So maybe it's that right, happened. But basically, but. It's, it's a partridge kind of market. In other words, it's a Tesla kind of market. <laughs> it's a, yes, Tesla was up yet another 8% today. How mad is Victoria at you? Well, she only, fortunately, she only sold... Um, about a five percent of her holdings. She's Is she gonna moving, sell any more? She's, she's moving to Florida to be near you and 
maybe I'll come, I'll, maybe I'll come visit the both of you. But she, that would be uh, great. You should definitely get in touch with me when she moves. Uh, but uh, seriously, yeah, she'd, be good, good, she'd be a good person to, to follow. But in, in any case, um, I think there. It's it's a modern market. It's a modern market with with the young people who always seem to do better. They go they they they're the first ones to buy the internet stocks, the Googles, and and they're moving into Bitcoin rather than gold. Right. And that's the and. There's more and more the government's spending money, taking taking control of the economy. That used to be very bad news, but now it's good news. Now, now it's the time to buy. So, what they're talking about another three trillion and another six fourteen hundred dollars for each. For each person, All right? It's so let, you know, let's let's get with Partridge. It's um, it's a bull market for um, Tesla. It's a bull market well, for stocks, and it's bear market for gold. I wonder if Baron has made top tick Tesla today with the article that Tesla is a, a trillion dollar company. Uh, it's technically an $8 billion company, but uh, Barron said that because if you count all of the stock options and warrants and convertible debt, which are all deep in the money, Tesla is now 1.2 billion company, a tr well, a trillion dollar company, essentially. And uh, at the same time, if you know Michael Burry, who was depicted by Christian Bale in the big short, who, alleged, who was the head hedge fund manager who has um, predicted and profited from the subprime crisis. He is now publicly very short uh, Tesla. Actually, he's been short since December 1st. Of course, Tesla is up another 48% since, but he tweeted today or yesterday, I forgot, that now he doubles down and he is very, very, very short Tesla. So that's an interesting tidbit. Who's the other? Who's the other famous bear who? Who's very short? Oh, uh, uh, yes, James Ch Chanos. Yes. Whatever you pronounce his name. Yeah, but he's, he's been, been short. He's been short well. for six months or so. Well, probably six years, but now. That brings to mind. The opposite of what Partridge said. I've never met a short who's made money over time. Soros says that he lost more money being short than any other any other thing. Eventually, mm -hmm. I've been around for a hundred years, as you know. Eventually, you read in the papers every three to five years. The last fund that was short went bankrupt. I mean, they closed, they closed their doors. Right. And Alan Abelson used to say that it, he won't become bullish until the last, the last bull throws in the towel. But it really is true that every short fund eventually will go under. I, I hate to think of how how far down the um, the triple short ETFs are. They must be down about 90 percent by now. Probably more. Anyway, but Tesla shorts are actually at the pretty much all time low. The the percentage of float that Tesla is short is very low. But the potential, or potential, the amount of shorting in the market is very high. Right. Margin debt is very high. Anyway, bad, yeah. bad news. But right. 
But it's a bull market. Exactly. Okay, well, I guess, I guess um, we'll both be here on Monday and making money on loans. Yep. Thank you very much. See you next week. Yes, Have a great right. weekend. Same to you. Bye.